Okay, good morning. Um, it's nice to be here today. Um, really thrilled to be speaking here today at SOCAP. As has already been mentioned, I'm from a company called Goodcore, and we're in the fortunate position of getting to work and partner with all sorts of kind of non-profits, foundations and companies to help them kind of maximize the efficacy of their social impact work. And one of the things that started happening with the companies we work with, we kept hearing the same question coming up over and over again. And that question was, what is going on? We've got all this market research that tells us that people are willing to pay more for products and services that meet their values and express what they're interested in. But we're not seeing that translate into sales. What's happening? And so we started to think about that and we started to ponder this question internally. Like, can brands really be good? Well, I guess that depends on how you think about and how you contextualize this one word. I bet if I asked everybody in this room to take a moment to think about what the word good means for them, and then asked you to tell me, there'd be quite a diverse range of opinions, right? Because goodness is fundamentally subjective. Well, for me, I think that consumers do want to do good. I think that everyday Americans want to make value-based purchase decisions that reflect what's good for their families, their communities, and the environment that they're part of. But they're not able to do that. Why? Well, I think it's something to do with this. This is what we're faced with as consumers when we go into the grocery store. And if you're like me, and you've got two small children running around, and you're trying to just get everything on the list, Really being thoughtful and mindful about which products and brands make it into your cart and which don't is quite a challenge. And we're all time pressed, right? We're all trying to make these difficult decisions in the moment and we don't have enough bandwidth to think everything through. You know, when you think about the grocery store and the, and the food products we buy, we think about the clothing that we buy. But then when you start to get into more complex products and services that are different to make, difficult to make judgments about, consumer electronics, financial services, cars. It's really hard for consumers to see goodness in the decisions that they make. And so that got me thinking, as social impact practitioners, are we really listening, right? We've got all of these terms, CSR, sustainability, etc., that we use to codify our world. But do those terms really mean anything to consumers? So we set off with the ambition of trying to find out. And we've taken a really human-centered approach to our research with an open-ended survey that allowed people to tell us about the judgments that they made, that allowed us, them to tell us in their own words what's important, what goodness means to them. It's important to note that kind of the findings that I'm going to share with you today from phase two of our research are biased towards the good magazine audience. So these are conscious consumers, right? They have slightly different characteristics to the general population. We wanted to use these early adopters to help us think about what the parameters of goodness might be. And then moving forward from today and into early 2016, we'll be testing and kind of trying to get some figures around those parameters of goodness with the general population. So that said, what are the key indicators of what's good? What did we hear? Well, we heard that people are interested in how brands treat people, whether they're fair and equitable to the people they employ and the people involved in their supply chain. We heard they're interested in transparency in the way that we do business, in honest leadership, in kindness, fairness, those kind of things. Sustainability, even with these conscious consumers, only came six on this list of kind of most important topics, right? Or most important issues. What that tells me is that people are judging goodness the way that we would judge people, right? They're using human terms and descriptors to describe what's good. They're talking about brands the way I might talk about a close friend or a trusted colleague. And I think that's really interesting. But just because I think it's interesting doesn't mean it's ma it matters, right? So why should anyone pay attention to this? What's, what's going on here? Well, what's good about this is that we found out that being good pays off. Being good is good for business, which I think is good news for everyone in this room, right? Because we found that 65% of our respondents bought or used services after they found about, out about that product's goodness. So once those key purchase drivers of quality, cost, and convenience are satisfied, goodness could be the thing that seals the deal. 
that helps consumers to choose one product over another. More importantly, we heard that it can drive loyalty. 94% of respondents told us that they were really likely, extremely likely to go back and make repeat purchases from those good brands. So goodness could be that stickiness factor, that delighter that helps us to grow relationships with consumers over time. But here's a warning. It really has to be authentic. Our, cons our conscious consumers are smart, and they can tell the difference between you know, something that was just a marketing campaign and something that was genuine and authentic and grassroots as part of the, the company, that they were authentic in their intentions to do and be good. So thinking about where we are and what we all might be doing, how can we help brands express their goodness? What have we learned from this research so far? Few hints and tips to think about. Number one, show how goodness is an integral part of your business, not just an add-on. So you know, Warby Parker, it's got its one-to-one -one model, it's a B Corps uh, certified, but not everyone can do that. But Target's a great example. It's found a way to give 5% of its profits to charity, and it involves its employees in how those funds are distributed. That's $4 million a week. Amazing, right? Um, what better way to indicate to your customers that you're more than just profits? Second thing to think about is really think about focusing on your people, your employees, and the communities of which you are a part. Um, our survey respondents told us they're not reading CSR reports, <laughs> they're not going on websites and looking for data, they're looking for shortcuts to understand your brand's values and what it might be about. And they're doing that by looking at your employees. So, Trader Joe's came up in the top five most often cited good brands. And people were making judgments about the employees' happiness and their satisfaction, and using that as a kind of indicator of the values of that business. Thirdly, you need to tell people about the good work that you're doing. Don't shout too loudly, don't brag, but definitely tell people about it. Who here knows about Chobani? Who here knows anything about them? So one or two, yeah. What we heard is um, that consumers are looking for this good work. So Chobani, for those of you who don't know, give 10% of their profits, channel that into their foundation. But it's pretty hard to find that information on the packaging. And you have to dig into a bunch of layers of web pages to find that information. Consumers want you to help them understand goodness and make great decisions about what they're buying, even in things like yogurt. Finally, consumers want you to embrace transparency. A lot of the clients that we work with might be nervous about sharing their good work, knowing that perhaps they've made great progress in one area, but there are other areas that they still need to work on. But these consumers are smart. They know that you can't be perfect. And they talked about Patagonia as being a great example of that. Patagonia are really honest and open about the successes and challenges of being and doing good, and they want to hear about both. As long as you're open and honest, consumers were fine with that. So, yes, I think brands really can be good, and it's up to us to try and help bridge that gap between the great work that brands are doing and what the average consumer is looking for to help them make those decisions. So, Three key takeaways from today. Number one, being good is good for business. You know, it can make a difference. Think about how we can drive loyalty with the great work that we do. Consumers do care about goodness and they want to know more. How can we help them find out and connect the dots? And finally, think about what's genuinely important to people. We heard that it's about being human. How can we speak to consumers in their own terms? And how can we, we ensure that we're authentic and grounded in what we do? Goodness, we've heard, starts from within. Thank you. <laughs>